as a child, my father's family, we go out and fish and spending time on nature, sleeping in, in a tent and fishing Arctic char. Along with Arctic char, cod, halibut and wolf fish in Greenland, wild Atlantic salmon are also on the menu. We call salmon in Greenland Kapisilik. Raven is one of fewer than 400 licensed commercial fishers who can catch and sell wild Atlantic salmon. It is all sold within the country, fresh and frozen at local markets. The last commercial fishery in the world targeting wild Atlantic salmon from North America. So that's how I grew up. So I know fishing a little yeah. bit. The Greenland salmon fishery today is small compared to the past. When the legendary conservation angler Lee Wolf took this footage in the 1960s, it was a free-for-all. Miles of invisible net were strung stretched out just under the surface, scooping up salmon that migrate to Greenland from more than 2,000 rivers in Europe and North America. Wolf filmed aboard a Danish trawler that caught 36,000 large Atlantic salmon in one short trip. As the number of Atlantic salmon returning to home rivers in places like Canada and the United Kingdom dropped off, governments tried to rein in the Greenland fishery. But real solutions were out of reach. So in the 1990s, leading wild salmon conservationists stepped up and negotiated directly with commercial fishers in Greenland to reduce the take. Since then, Greenland salmon conservation agreements have grown and modernized they continue to make a real difference for wild salmon. I've been a um, passionate Atlantic salmon angler since I was 13 or 14 years old. And uh, once I got my driver's license when I was 16, spent every single weekend up on the public water on the Miramichi salmon fishing and have been doing it ever, ever since. And I was really lucky, um, really, really lucky to get a job with the Atlantic Salmon Federation when I was 27. And, you know, here I am 36 years later feeling still really, really lucky. Uh, I've been able to meld my work-life career with what I care about. Well, I was, I was very much brought up respecting salmon and observing and studying salmon. And every summer we would travel all over the country and if we drove over a river, we would have a family quiz and there's salmon in that <laughs> river and can you name 10 pools on that river? Uh, so this was my hobby <laughs> and my passion since I was a kid. Um, so it's that, it's, it's that you know, core love and respect for the salmon that, that drives me. So it was um, late 50s, early 60s before uh, salmon, were really found at Greenland. All of a sudden, uh, salmon started being caught in fairly large numbers, and uh, other countries like Norway and Japan and Russia, it's kind of like a gold mine mentality, all, all headed to, uh, to Greenland. Uh, through the 60s to the early 70s, uh, with all the other countries fishing as, as well as Greenlanders, talking about a couple of million fish that were being harvested year after year after year after year in Greenland. And what they didn't realize at the time was that, that this is not a single stock of fish, but this is what we would call a mixed stock fishery. So you have salmon from more than 2,000 rivers on both sides of the Atlantic gathered to feed. So when, when conducting a fishery there, there's, there's no way for them to, to target healthy populations because they're all mixed together. So essentially, a, a, a good day in the fishery in Greenland could wipe out an entire river. So this became a huge concern for, for salmon conservationists around the world. Other countries slowly were taken out of the Greenlandic waters, uh, but it's uh, not been well managed, it's not been well regulated. The overfishing by Japan and Russia and Denmark um, really you know, put Atlantic salmon in trouble. The salmon have never really recovered since, since the early 70s. ASF and NASF wanted a solution that would benefit both Greenlanders and wild salmon. Our goal is not to uh, eliminate the Greenland fishery because the Greenlanders have a right to fish in their own waters, but it's to make sure the fishery is science-based, that it's sustainable, 
um, that the Greenlanders are getting good value, the best possible value for, for the salmon. When you go to an open air market in Greenland, you know, you see, you see whales, you see salmon, you see halibut, you see, you know, you see ducks, you see seals, you see, that's, they, they live off the land, they, they, they absolutely depend upon it. We've got to recognize that the fish in their waters, they have a right to the, to the fish. And obviously the Greenlanders did not want to fish the Atlantic salmon to extinction, they depended on the, on the salmon as well. You know, our rivers are the nursery area, and Greenland is kind of like the smorgasbord, so you, you need to take care of, of, of both areas. But government-led agreements didn't do enough for wild salmon. So our partner, the North Atlantic Salmon Fund, uh, my good friend Dory Vigfusen, who's no longer with us, came to the Atlantic Salmon Federation and said, look, I've got this concept, this strategy of working with the Greenlanders, actually partnering with the Greenlanders to save salmon. So ASF and NASF raised private funds and went directly to the fishermen and negotiated with them an agreement where they were fairly compensated and in return uh, would reduce their fishery. So I think this is, this is a, a very creative and a very effective way of, of uh, conserving salmon. So it is a partnership, it is a collaboration. We've invested in alternative uh, employment opportunities for the fishermen. We've helped them develop a lump fish row fishery, which is now one of Greenland's most lucrative uh, commercial fisheries. We've invested in ecotourism opportunities. We're investing in a modernization of the fishery. Uh, we've invested in real-time reporting. Uh, all of the fishermen, commercial and private in Greenland, now have to have a license. They have to report uh, on time. That's something entirely new. ASF's work in Greenland extends beyond fisheries. Each fall, staff from ASF and its partners travel there to build relationships and conduct research. Since 2018, we've been tagging wild salmon to map the last leg of their incredible migration, the journey from feeding grounds in West Greenland back home to natal rivers. In 2023, we began using state-of-the-art environmental DNA technology to test for salmon in Greenlandic rivers, where they are appearing for the first time. Research that will help reveal how wild salmon are adapting to a changing climate. The conservation agreements in Greenland are making a real difference for wild Atlantic salmon. We see a very direct benefit and a very direct result of these agreements. This fishery has gone from hundreds of tons down to 30 tons. And ASF and ASF are absolutely making a difference. These agreements in Greenland have saved hundreds of thousands of salmon and will continue to do so. And what was once a, a very prolific and large fishery is now a small subsistence fishery. As we've seen when our agreements are in place, year after year, more and more salmon coming back. It's just like compounded interest. So as you get more eggs into the gravel, you get more fry, you get more smolt going out, you get more salmon at Greenland, you get more fish coming back. When we're able to string together an agreement like the 2002 to 2010, you know, yes, you see improvements right away, but every year that the agreement's there, the improvements are larger. And right now we've had our agreement, uh, our current agreement in place for six years. We wanted to go for 12, and we're beginning to see that uh, as, as well with even you know, bigger increases in the large salmon coming back. In my view, it's the best investment that can be made in Atlantic salmon conservation. 